Hello, Al Pals. This is Big Al. Welcome to Big Al Presents Films with Friends. Tonight, the film is the 1987 romantic comedy starring Kim Cattrall and the actor in Hollywood whose face I would most like to punch, Andrew <laughs> McCarthy. Yes, Mannequin is a movie and we're going to be watching it tonight <laughs> and sad to say my normal group of friends could not be here tonight troy and Nanette had another planned arrangement so i have gone into the depths of time to bring back someone who we used to watch films with all the time it is the maharaja of the monomyth <laughs> the Archduke of the Archetype, the aspirational one himself, Professor Geek. How are you Hello. doing, sir? I, I, I was going to wait and see if you've been there, the one who started the whole rewatch thing in our community. Yes, you are, but let's not Twice go me. <laughs> <laughs> I am doing well. How are you, sir? I am doing fine. I am so glad that you could join me tonight we have been talking about doing this rewatch for quite a while uh mannequin notorious for the fact that you love this film if i'm yep, not love mistaken it. you love this movie i have seen it once and wanted to punch andrew mccarthy the entire time now only I, once really yeah only one time now i might have wow. got it bits and pieces here and there you know you catch you know nothing's going to stop us now on MTV a bazillion times, but uh, <laughs> I, I I do kind of over inflate my hatred of Andrew McCarthy. I don't hate mm -hmm. Andrew McCarthy, but it's kind of fun that sometimes I do look at him and just want to punch him in the face. Why? And just to clarify for people, there's nothing about him at all. He just truly just doesn't like the look of his face. There's something about him, but there are other issues. One, he stole uh, the girl from Ducky in Prairie and Pink. That's he true. stole the girl from Judd Nelson and said it was fire. <laughs> and I just think, he, you know, I just think that behavior should not be lauded by being a popular movie star. <laughs> and that, that's just how I feel. So mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Andrew Mac Andrew McCarthy. Yes, we I I, I we like making I like making fun. I don't know if anybody else likes me making fun of Andrew McCarthy, but uh, I do remember seeing this film. And there are there's a lot of fun aspects of this film. This is a, not a movie to be taken seriously at all. It is pure comedic fun, and deservedly so. It is very much eighties which I love because I mm -hmm. love all things yeah. 80s. Pure 80s. Yeah, pure 80s. In fact, I got another 80s month coming up in uh <laughs> this this summer, but more on that later. I came up with I came up with uh a later month uh a couple of days ago and I'm like really excited about it, but I'm going to keep that on the wraps for a while, which means I'll probably mention it during the show <laughs> because I can't keep stuff to myself as we all know. <laughs> because true, things happen true. and come out in streams but <laughs> that's another story but yeah yeah like i said um uh troy and Annette <clears throat> couldn't come so professor geek and i have decided to do this rewatch which we have been talking about for so long and uh before i go any further let me welcome the chat and uh let me check one thing here i have uh, I forgot to, eh, sorry, I am having technical issues. Okay, there I go. Uh, <laughs> I have my uh, YouTube up also because, um, are you a Blue Ridge for me? Yes, you are. Uh, yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, because sometimes I don't really check it. But uh, let's say hi to the chat. First was Go Team Ghost Planet. Thank you for joining me. Rob Paulson Technically from Animaniacs is in the film. Technically, well, first was a couple of days ago. Sound of Did you see that? Uh, no, I didn't. I might have. I don't know. I forget. Of course, <laughs> she if wanted, I did, I don't wa remember. She wanted to correct your thumbnail and say, correction, Professor Geek, 
had loved Kim Cattrall. <laughs> Not present tense. <laughs> now, love... Uh, okay, it's Filios or Agape. Okay? <laughs> Doesn't need to be Eros. You are the only Eros in his quiver. I know it's a little play on a weird word there. Wow. Which is funny that I... You know why I know that? <laughs> because what? the priest used it in the homily tonight. So I yeah, the, the it. three... There's actually four yeah. Greek terms for love. There's also storgi, which is uh, Story, to be well, fond of stuff in life, like I love pizza or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, some of us are a little more arrows on pizza, but that's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but well, uh, well, Good well, Team Ghost well. Pass says Rob Paulson was in, and I, and I didn't see him in like the Wikipedia entry. I had to go deep and find, yes, he is. He plays cop number four. Oh, I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, so we'll have to cool. look out for cop number four in here. Uh, longest running superhero RPG on Earth. Greetings, sir. Thank you for joining me. The lovely sound engraver. I'll be in and out of the stream. Have a have a good one now. Takes a big man to go through a film involving an actor you don't like. Yes, it does. And like I said, it's all part of the fun. Um, is uh. Yeah, uh, asking if there was a link. Uh, not tonight, sadly. Uh, with Troy not being here, he, he he is not going to be able to stream it on Cosme. You guys are going to be left to your own devices, but it is as easy as one, Literally. two, three to find this movie. If you guys <laughs> do that, you know. Um, Cedric's Maws, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, <clears throat> anybody else that's also up? Oh, that's it. Oh, Eris <laughs> and the Quiver. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I thought it was funny too, just right off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> 80s was a great sound engraver. Yep. Uh, okay, go team, ghost planet. Big Al, I'm sorry about what happened. Let's not mention anything about that. Let's just enjoy the movie and enjoy the chatter tonight. Let's just, you know, we're going to keep everything happy and joyful or nobody watch for anything no i'm just kidding i was trying to do that i was watching seinfeld no soup for you i couldn't, I what couldn't did, make that uh, way off cult, cultural kits said lots of ads you're not monetized lots though are they talking about me yeah. no i don't know what cultural kits is meaning though i don't know what they're referring to they just said lots of ads i don't know um, I don't know. I don't know, CK. Uh, lots of ads on one, two, three. I never noticed it. I've never had. I I don't have issues with one, two, three. I have an ad blocker. Oh, oh, the the thing that you're Maybe. getting the movie from. Um, I I did see. I'm, I'm old school, and I put a DVD in the complete in the yeah. TV, so I'm ready to watch it on my physical media. And that's it. Like I said, you know, we put the, I put the word out a while back. I you know I I or like I said, a lot of these sometimes are going to be. A little more obscure films. Sometimes they're a little more accessible. Sometimes they're not. The next, the one next week, I actually think is on YouTube, um, which is Robin Hood Men in Tights. Looking forward to that. One. <laughs> uh, but Mannequin sadly was not. But there are ways to find it if you choose to do it, or if you if you like the professor has the DVD, who he actually spent money to have this film. Of course. Yeah, when did you first see this movie? Was it in the theater? Oh, or... as a child? No, as a I don't. I never saw. Oh, that's right, eighty-seven. You were barely even born yet, were you? <laughs> I was seven years old. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then every summer after that, I would always rent it with my um, cousins when we would go visit my grandmother. It was just, uh, it would stay up late night watching. It was just. I, there's a lot more to this movie than just sort of it's not just a mindless comedy it is a comedy <clears throat> but it does something really interesting with the pygmalion story so we'll talk about that as we go through it but yeah i've got well, a lot like, of uh you know, like i said you are the maharaja of the monomyth and uh, <laughs> and, and stuff like that so you you know i'm sure you'll be pulling pulling stuff out uh like that i, I was i was reading return of the king which we'll be getting back to this tuesday on catholic bible geek and mm -hmm. i was sitting there pulling out little things i'm like oh my god he's influencing me <laughs> <I'm> actually like <laughs> seeing things yeah. good. good days of you just mindlessly listening to a story are over <laughs> yeah, sometimes there's something to be said about that you know mindless listening is can, can be fun but i you know i do pull out little 
things like that. Um, Go Deep Goes Planet. Okay, Big Al, it's movie time. Yeah, it almost is. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have used the eighties. What cinema? Cinema? Just... Cinema snob? He used to be an eighties Dan fan. I'm thinking. Oh, probably. Uh, fan, yes, probably okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The D and the F are close. I have made that many times myself. Uh, so used to seeing the prof on the left. <laughs> That's right. This is my stream. <laughs> <laughs> this is big and I just want to. Ta- I just want to applaud you for applaud you for those Hollywood Montrose sunglasses you got on there. Don't you like? And I will. And I will say, you know me. I was not happy with the PNG that that it gave me, so I had to doctor what was there and turn the one side yellow, which it was black <laughs> before, which looked really stupid. Yeah. So, because sure. I had a, I had a pair of glasses that kind of looked like that. Uh, once I, I gave them to the kid I worked with in high school uh, as kind of a going away gift. It was just these wacky pair of you know sunglasses that I got for like a buck at a dollar store. And I had hey, them for years. Before we start, I'm curious, uh, and you guys in the chat can tell me too. Every now and it's not it's not unbearable in any way. It's no big deal. But every now and then, Al is roboting a little bit, and I don't know if that's my connection hearing him or if it's his connection. I was wondering what it sounds like to the chat. Um, I would not be surprised if it's me. Every now and Could then, be me. I get a little glitch. But yeah, you you do live in the sticks too. So. I know. Yeah, we've been having issues um, here and there. CK's asking me server one or server two. I don't know. I go to one, two, three, and I go to the movie, and I usually get the first one, which is um, VIP. I think it's a VIP server, VIP something. The top one, <laughs> which usually works pretty well. Evo looks Load like is it's, also a good one. Looks like it's me that's uh, it's my connection because apparently I'm the one that sounds a little roboty now and then. So, but I okay. I can um I can take a break and, and re- reboot my router and come right back if you want, or we or I can just sound robot It's up to you, your stream. Um, how long would it take you to reboot your router? Uh, five minutes. God, just sound robot I don't care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Santa Graver turned off her Wi-Fi like a good girl. <laughs> so hopefully that'll help. Uh, she's saying it's not that bad. So, um, yeah, uh, CK, uh, yeah, he's saying both servers. He's only seeing ads. I honestly don't know what to tell you. I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I, my system is set up. I'm very much get things to way I know them, and any deviation kind of throws me for a loop. I used to also go to Put Locker, but Put Locker changed, and now I'm like hey, flipped out because I can't that. figure it out. I'm gonna go use the restroom one last time while you're talking about that. I'll be right back. Oh uh, well, if you're doing that, might as well go reset your router. All right, all right, be right back. Okay, yeah, I'll keep it. Well, I was about to start the movie, but let the professor go take a quick professor geek break. Uh, with that, I will just kind of, I'm going to do a lot of end spiel right now about, you know, like I said, uh, the professor, it's nice to have him back. He is the one that started this whole rewatch biz and I, I had a lot of fun doing it. And so when he kind of burned out on it, I kept going because I, this is the only real social, uh, stuff I get. Asian dating. I'm sorry, CK. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we've been keeping this going. Me and also Troy, and you know, a lot of people have have been doing these rewatches. I find it a lot of fun, and it's cool to get the obscure movies. But sometimes you're gonna find have a movie that if you don't have it or like I said, if Troy's not here to do co- Cosme with it, then uh, kind of got to be left to your own devices. I know it's out there because I I've got a I got an MP4 of it because uh, I I download film I hoard films, which is kind of kind of weird. Um, yeah, the '80s was a wonderful time period. Uh oh, the prof- professor's gone. Yep, he is re- rebooting his router, so we will. 
it'll be a, m a few moments before we uh get this movie up and going um i will say uh mannequin i remember seeing this film on cable probably like a lot of people who were teens early 20s in the 80s actually yeah i was 22 when this movie came out so i remember seeing it on cable and just thinking it was really bizarre and having Meshach Taylor as Hollywood Montrose with those wild glasses kind of is the inspiration be behind my uh, sunglasses tonight. Um, or is what? Hey, it's, hey, see, hey, see there, CK, you just have to finally get through the whole thing. Um, go team go or his fan man cave. Oh, wait. One day we both hope for the fan man will come out of retirement from his fortress of fan fanitude one day or his fan man cave. Uh, yeah, fan man's still out there. Uh, I can't speak for him, but, you know, I talked to him yesterday. He got really upset. I, I sent a picture of... Uh, I've been going through a, a box of stuff, and I found the Star Wars... Uh, no, the Indiana uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark Marvel adaptations, one, two, and three. And I didn't have them in a package because someone actually gave them to me. And so he got a little upset that not only was I holding them in my bare hands, but they weren't in a bag. So, <laughs> And then, of course, he proceeded to say what I want for them. But uh, yeah, I'm finding cute little things like that. Found a lot of early Star Wars Marvel comics that I'll have to go through, which uh, is really exciting. Um, like I said, just kind of sh doing the spiel here, waiting waiting for the professor to come back on. Uh, but but yeah, when I moved last year, I really haven't had a chance to unpack stuff. Or, or, you know, just, there was always something, like I said, mom never felt well. So, I, you know, having people in here around her just, I, I didn't want to upset her that much with with a lot of stuff. And, uh, but now, you know, I've, now that she's passed, I'm going to keep myself busy by opening a box at a time and just finding these little treasures like uh, my college senior seminar paper 30 pages on serotonin and how it affects aggressive behavior that was a fun fun 30 some pages to write uh, i found an old uh paper i did in high school on science fiction movies and a report on ufos i did in like seventh or eighth grade so it's kind of, I, I am a hoarder, man. I find all these old things. Um, sounds good. Um, Go Team Ghost Pie has a, an Archie Digest collection. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I've got a lot of stuff tucked away and a lot of stuff that I've had tucked away that I forgot I had. I did not know I had Raiders of the Lost Ark movie adaptations the single copies not not like the combined edition but the but the original comics and a lot of the original marvel star wars comics and number one star wars the first one of the thing i'm hoping i could find two three and the rest of them but i know i have number one i don't know how much they're worth but to me they're they're just kind of a touch they're a touchstone to my childhood and um i'm sure the professor is working very hard to get back on, to get to get back online uh just a waiting for a boy like him to come back in. oh my god you know copyright strike sure they're welcome to anything i'm making off of this stream <laughs> which is nothing i do this for myself uh, sorry for the delay tonight, but it's a short movie. It's only an hour and a half, not like the close to four hours and two and a half hours of the last two movies I've watched. So tonight's much more of a, of your basic little film. Uh, you also have the classic DC comics, um, Marvel toy collection and other toys. Cool. 
I have a few toys, not a lot of toys, uh, but I'd like to be able to get to them. And speaking, uh, and speaking of comics, of course, rest in peace to the great Neil Adams, who just passed away. Uh, great artist, um, especially known for his Batman uh, art. And also her Naomi Judd passed away. A uh, great country singer, of course, the mother part of the duo The Judds and an actress that uh, has appeared in a few films, sadly passed away just a few weeks after performing at uh, one of the Country Music Awards shows, surprisingly. Uh, but another great talent. This has been a terrible, terrible year for losing people, um, not just professionally, but also personally. I've lost a few people. Um, come on, Prof, where are you? What be happening? Okay, yeah, CK. Yeah, like I said, you, you just kind of got to get used to it. It is kind of one of those weird uh, sites that people don't talk about a lot. I, I use it a lot to find stuff. It's how I'm watching Star Trek Picard and uh, that new show, Julia, about Julia Child, which is so charming. I love Julia Child. If anybody follows me on Facebook and wondering why I have Julia Child as my cover photo, it's because I'm really enjoying the TV show that's kind of based on her. And uh, the actress who is playing her is fantastic. Um, but yeah, that and Picard, I'm kind of watching through that. Um, also Moon Knight, I'm enjoying. Moon Knight and Picard both end next week, this coming week. So that'll be interesting. Uh, be sorry to see those go. I'm waiting for, I'm waiting to see if Moon Knight sticks the landing. I love the way it started. The last couple episodes have been really trippy. I'm waiting and hoping that it pays off. Uh, Picard has been much, to me, much better than it was last year. Uh, the first season, I'm liking this season a lot more. A uh, couple of little issues here and there, but basically entertaining and waiting to see if uh, they pull that out of the fire. But I, I've been enjoying what they're doing so far, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the final episode. Uh, Cedric's Moss, Mannequin was weird, watched it as a kid, was interested, but was unable to get into the movie. It was kind of like a precursor to the real doll. Uh, a little bit. And, and, you know, thinking about it, if you've ever read some of the professor's work, he has one, uh, a short story that's kind of probably inspired by Mannequin. Um, I'll have to ask him when he gets back on. <laughs> the professor li lives in the uh, in the in the depths of Virginia, and sometimes I guess the uh, Wi-Fi is not a hundred percent. But uh, like I said, just to wait, wait for him. Anybody have any questions or? remarks or anything like that please shoot them down please shoot them up i'm i'm need something to talk about uh well like i said next week uh we're gonna be back on my channel again for robin hood men in tights and then the week after that we'll be back on the next channel for black cauldron the, the Disney animated classic fantasy film, which I have not seen in a very long time and I'm looking forward to watching again. And after that, back on my channel on the 21st, we're going to be watching Bill Murray's film Stripes, uh, the classic comedy with him in the army uh, with Harold Ramis and... Also has John Candy in the film and a lot of other great actors in that movie. Uh, seven, 70s toys, mean, oh, you mean 80s toys? Oh, I had both. And I love them all. 
do we have all the rewatches lined up? Because I would love to do a rewatch of the original Annie. Uh, a lot of mine are planned. Uh, I've got, I've got May figured out. Uh, I got June figured out, and I'm thinking September is when I'm going to do uh, these other 280s films that I've been wanting to do. Don't have July, although somewhere in July and August, I'm going to do Gone with the Wind. Uh, now with uh, Netter's Network, she's going alphabetically, and uh, we've already we're we're in the B's, so we have we've passed Annie. Uh, Annie's not a film that I really know, and uh oh, Professor is having issues. I think his Wi-Fi went out altogether. Come on, dude. <laughs> The professor has exploded. And so I'm typing an oh no to him. I'll wait, see if he can get it back up. Eighties toys for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, rest in peace, Neil Adams, definitely. Great, great artist. One of my favorite uh artists uh with interpreting Batman. Uh, a lot of the great ones are dying. George Perez, of course, is very ill. And uh, I, I, when I saw the Batman artist pass away, I'm like, oh, no. First thing I thought was George Perez, but no, it was Neil Adams. And uh, the co-creator of Man Bat and Ra's al Ghul. Yep. Hey, I get a flicker. I'm getting a flicker. Is he back? I, I am back. The professor is back. Oh my I god! I'm terribly sorry. Let me turn off my cam. I gotta stick over it. I uh, I'm so sorry, y'all. I just I hate uh, I hate my setup here. They they the modem I think is going bad. They sent a new one, but I can't find where I put it, which is classic, uh, prof. But uh, uh, that's all right. I was going. Um, things was, sound much was, better now, though. Connection's better and everything. It just took a long time, much longer than usual. The modem's just slowly going. You know. <clears throat> was good to me. Al joins, saying hi. Um, Got to go to sleep. No, I was doing my basic afternoon with Al spiel. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Basically, just talking and responding, and just you know, off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know Cedric Moss wants to do any. We will keep that in mind. I don't currently have it planned. It's not we'll do it tomorrow, I... Cedric. Tomorrow. Yeah. It's yeah. It's only day away. <sighs> <God. laughs> Uh, <laughs> the Prince of Puns. Yeah, I'm add another one to your gross <laughs> list of um, ro royalty. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so we're ready to start, Mannequin. I hope. Are you ready to go, Prof? Ready to go. Ready to go. You count down. Uh, or... for the, yeah, I can now. I'm going to let everybody know where we're starting. We are starting right before the... MGM, yeah, MGM logo starts in the in the lion's roar. So get there's black space there. The lion hasn't started roaring yet. No logo. <sighs> yeah. Um, CK has not seen Moon Knight and dislikes Picard. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm enjoying Picard. I really Man am. after my own heart, CK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> uh, like I said, Moon Knight, waiting to see if it sticks the landing. Got a little too weird in the last couple episodes, which isn't bad, but they spent too much time on the weirdness. But uh, Picard, much better than last year. It has issues, but no deal breakers for me. So I'm looking forward. What's the one that is what that's coming out? The, that Outer Range or something that's on Prime, uh, Troy talked about last night. I've been wanting to start that. Haven't yet, but uh, that's on my the list. Star Trek thing. No, it's uh, it stars Josh Brolin. It's on Amazon. It's oh. it's called Outer Range or something like that. Huh. Um, no, the new Star Trek is Strange New Worlds, one with Pike and stuff. And quite frankly, that looks interesting to me. Uh, we'll see. I don't know, but uh, ready to start. Going to count down. When I say go, we'll go in three, two. One, go. Rawr. Ars gratis artis. I'm probably going to be a second or two behind you because my PS4 gets a little uh, 
lazy. A little wonky. When you've been having it on pause for a while. Love these 80s graphics, though. Yeah. Gladden Entertainment Corporation. And I love that uh, it starts with a with an actual little prologue. No credits or anything. Yeah. Edfu, Egypt, a really long time ago. A really ago. long time ago, right before launch. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean, it sets up exactly the kind of film it is, straight mm-hmm. up. It's it's going to be a weird, weird comedy, weird jokes. And it's interesting. You you might think why set why start it? <laughs> and I got to say, now see, I have a crush on Kim Cattrall in this movie. Not it wasn't Kim Cattrall in general, because I'd seen her in Police Academy, uh, you know, Porky's and all that. But it was her in this movie that I had a crush on because something about this character. And it's a great way to introduce your character too. Uh, Mummy's there. Then you just see her live eyes looking back and forth. Yep. Mummy talking to Mummy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, everybody knows the Mummy is my favorite of the Universal Monsters. That's true. Oh God, so young, so beautiful. Is hasn't she been, um, hasn't been good. tainted? Hasn't been tainted by Sex in the City. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting that they start this in Egypt rather than in Greece, because you know the Pygmalion story is a Greek myth, myth but Egypt works more for the story because Egyptians were interested in you know eternal life and everything like that. And uh, she ends up having, well, not an eternal life, but a long-lived life as she goes through looking for true love. Uh, go team, goes by Egyptian mythology is cool. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I used to know a lot more about Egyptian mythology, but I've kind of like lost a lot of it. It's cool. Yeah, I have to go back and like really get into it because um, with Moon Knight has, you know, a lot of... Mm-hmm. Egyptian we, mythology. We got to give props to this epic Belinda Carlisle song that goes over the credits here. <laughs> so cool. I love the animation and everything. Just so I cool. Know. Takes me back. It I feel like it's summer me, vacation, late at night. Oh, good stuff. It, re- it reminds me of the stuff that they had at the beginning of uh, what was it like? One awesome summer or one crazy summer? The John... Uh, uh, Cusack film? Yeah, Cusack. Yeah, yeah. And also like looking... the uh, also the Better Off Dead had some animation mm-hmm. like yeah. that. But you're right. I I love it. It's just so strange and bizarre. And it also serves a purpose to kind of uh, narrate a little bit her life from from ancient Egypt to the modern day when this film was made, because yeah. she's gone through the gods have granted her wish. She's gone through now and come to life in different ways, trying to find true love by different people, you know, whether it was Michelangelo and it's usually as a piece of art that she comes to life as. So there she is with Columbus. (laughs) Well, the earth was flat. Now we know why it's round. (laughs) Got the different time periods there. They said Belinda Carlisle. Too bad they couldn't get the bangles and do the whole walk like an Egyptian thing happening. I'd be shocked if they didn't try. I really would. So here's the. Now, yeah. the Belinda, I mean, not Belinda Carlisle, the, the Pygmalion story is about falling in love with your art. That's one part of it. Mm-hmm. But then it's also a built-in story about the Jungian anima. And that's, I think, why this film is so crucial to me, because it was like part of the development of my own personal anima, you know? Excuse me. Hold me back. Wow. You smug little bastard. (laughs) (laughs) He's just looking lovingly at his artwork. (sighs) Sculpted this beautiful mannequin. That's all. I'm looking lovingly at my fist. (laughs) (laughs) Now, you did a short story that's kind of inspired a little bit by this, maybe? Oh, not by the movie, but the short story is another um, yeah. iteration of Pygmalion. You know, it's, a, it's kind of in that, but you can't help 
anybody who's seen the movie can't help but draw the draw I like comparison. This. I like that. He's trying out a pair of legs for it. He goes, wrong sex. <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about Pygmalion. He I he is creating her. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Sound says, I suppose I won't talk about Sean Bean when we rewatch Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> She she's not a Sean Bean fan. Oh, she is. She's threatening me. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, like I said, it's Filios <laughs> or Agape. I do love this uh, this mo not montage, but the sequence here too of him ticking off his bosses because he is an artist. And it doesn't matter what he's working on. He wants perfection. He wants to create art. He's not just there to mass produce stuff. So he's right. a sculptor in a mannequin plant. <laughs> You're supposed to knock out three or four of these a day. It almost kind of has that little Kelly LeBlanc. Kelly LeBlanc. Le you are yeah. Absolutely right, Al. I never put that together, but you Yeah, especially because of hair and just something about the, the eyes too. You're right. The mannequin itself looks like it's Kelly LeBrock made into a mannequin. You are right straight from weird science. You're so right. Yeah. But I mean, but I see you can see Catral too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so trying CK, out all these different things. Yeah, CK reminding us that he's Chris Kent. Yeah, I know. Uh, Josh Bolin, the rancher who finds a mysterious hole in his ranch. Yeah, that's that show that's on Prime, Outer Range or something like that. It's like very trippy. Now, it's interesting. This is the only one of his jobs. He gets a job creating, but this is the only one of his job that he doesn't lose for taking too long on the creations. From See, a writing kid, standpoint, I would say knows. he hates this guy too. See, he <laughs> him. biscuit brain. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> he just flies away. I know. <laughs> From a writing standpoint, though, I would have said they should cut this. I mean, it's got comedic, but I would say cut this because it doesn't match the theme of the other jobs that he loses. <laughs> <laughs> See, here we go. Why yeah. he keeps. I love a pit helmet. <laughs> I will. I will say I do love a pit. I like how he's got the flower for the eye. Mm -hmm. At least he gets lots of paychecks. <laughs> yeah, real small ones. It is crazy seeing these movies that I used to watch as such a child, because as an as you know, a forty two year old now, I'm looking at Jonathan McCarthy and thinking, oh my gosh, like he. He's like one of my students. I mean, as a child, though, you look to think he's an adult. You know, it's so weird. Yeah. Oh my God! You give that guy a beard. It's almost like me. <laughs> now that is how I make a pizza. Sound engraver seen me make pizzas on our date nights and whatnot, yeah. and I am very meticulous. The pepperonis all have to be laid out just so. I uh, I'm with you, my friend. Got to have good coverage. Mm -hmm. Can't just go willy nilly. I will say tonight, I did. I I had a very good dinner. I made myself some beer brats with some peppers and onions. I know you don't like onions, but they were yummy, delicious. I cooked them perfect. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, I I'm like, oh my God, I hit this. I hit the sweet spot of the peppers and onions. I was so proud oh, of myself. Nice. I even showed to a picture of my mom there. It's like, see, mom, I made them perfect. This is how I like them. <laughs> I've never who does this girl plays Roxy? I, I don't think I've seen her in other things. She never she, took off. She's been on things because I looked her up. Carol oh, Davis yeah. uh has been in um she was in like the Flamingo Kid, not really movies, but she was in Two Broke Girls, Scrubs, mm -hmm. Rebecca Mars, she was an angel for an episode. No, but, but I mean, like, like when she was young, like this, looks like she could have yeah. taken off and been one of the '80s stars. She was that guy that <laughs> that guy that plays her uh, boss, though. Uh, just classic jerk plays the jerk in all the movies he was in. Oh, what, James Spader? No, the uh, the big boss of Illustra. Oh. She kind of reminds me of. Um... Oh, the 
uh, Bob Newhart's wife from Newhart. Oh yeah, Emily. Yeah, well, her name is Emily, but I can't remember yeah. what the actress's name is. Me neither. Help me, chat. <laughs> she was in uh, True Grit too, right? Suzanne Fulchet. Yeah. Was she a True Grit? I think so. You're not talking about the main character, the girl, right? No, 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 no. no because no. that was Miri from Star Trek. Kim Dart. Oh, right? not not True Grit, not True Grit. Um. Oh. She, she it was, was the John Wayne movie he was in Marie, Marine O'Hara. Not not your one that you love, but it was the other one. Um, the oh, McClintock? McClintock, yeah, that's what she was in, McClintock. Was she in McClintock? I don't remember her in McClintock. So this is classic. Poor guy just uh, lost, lost job after job. His bike won't start. His girlfriend's basically now, breaking up with him until he gets a job. How the hell can a guy who doesn't can't keep a job have a motorcycle like that? Well, maybe it's in disrepair, which is why he's... But boom, the lightning strikes, and there's his masterpiece in the window. He finds a mannequin. Looking much more like Kim Cattrall than the first one did. Yeah. But, you know, it's different for me because I write stories. I don't create tangible, you know art but i do know that feeling like he tells her he's like you know you're the first thing i've created in a very long time that made me feel like an artist mm -hmm. and as a creator no matter what your art form is you do you know you go through spells and then immediately sometimes the inspiration just hits and you're like this is my baby you know whether it's a, a mannequin or a story or whatever yeah i will say in an odd way i know exactly what you're talking about because when i wrote my uh super famous ep meets santa claus <laughs> yes that was good as a senior in high school I was totally thrilled because I wrote it so quick, but it just, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't actually perfect. There's one line that bugs me to this day, but <laughs> uh, like the teacher loved it. And everybody loved it. It got in the newspaper and it just was like lightning in a bottle. Sophia! Oh, Estelle Getty. Ah, I, I miss her. her. You know what? I know it's weird to say this, but she was a nice looking woman. I would like to see pictures of her younger because I I only remember I've never seen her before this age, you know. So to me, growing up and then seeing her in Golden Girls and what she was the youngest of the Golden Girls actress wise. Um, yeah, she just always yeah. looked like an old person because she always played that old woman, you know. I'd love to see younger pictures yeah, of her, see what she looked like. Where was she born? She was born in 1923. So she's mid 60s at this point mm -hmm. it's not bad go, go team ghost planet go talking about the mannequin episodes on tales from the dark side do you know the names of those episodes go team because i have seen one of them at least and i've tried to hunt it down but i couldn't remember the episode name they, that, they have the one in, from twilight zone too yeah i, th I think Anne francis played the mannequin mm-hmm <laughs> Poor guy. Uh -huh. he, every time he goes up, he hits. Okay, as soon as I finish this. <laughs> <laughs> See, Bam. should have been electrocuted to death in the movie and end of Andrew McCarthy. Yes, I like these walking through <laughs> holding his butt <laughs> from where he's yeah. been electrocuted. <laughs> you guys, I do you drink tonight. Yeah, my my uh, thing, same thing I always have. My diet, Dr Pepper. Diet, Dr Pepper. I have a peach mango green tea, crystal light. Oh, sounds good. Yeah, I went fancy tonight. I do love, love, love those classic department stores like that. Uh, they're oh, they're yeah, a lost, yeah. you know. They're they're not many of them are around anymore from the old days, but it's kind of like they're on the they're on par with the old movie palaces. Uh, they really did used to be this big, elegant place, this event, you know, back in the 40s and everything. Well, just like malls. They mm -hmm. used to be like these really cool things. They kind of had a motif. And now they're just square buildings that they shove in as much stuff to sell you as possible. Yeah. There's no uh, ambiance to it anymore. Look at that <laughs> hairdo, man. James Spader. I love those glasses they gave him are slightly tinted, too. <laughs> Shoplifting. 
He, James Spader is such a great, he just, he's got that smarmy, you know. Yeah. Cause he, he's another one that I, you know, I, if I, if my fist accidentally met his face, it wouldn't, wouldn't. Seriously? Daniel Jackson? Dude. Got well, so no, not Daniel Jackson. Some of the other characters. This, see, Daniel Jackson saved him. Okay. Cause he's, he's purposely trying to play kind of nerdy and smarmy in this one, you know, so he's got right. that smirk or not smirk, but that weird thing he's got with you know, his face. He, I have seen him in other things that has saved him from, from, from the wrath of me. <laughs> God, they are so young. I know, so crazy young. It is wacky as hell, man. <laughs> uh, go team, Ghost Plan saying the After Hours Twilight Zone. Oh, yeah, wow. that's, I think that's the one with um, Anne Francis. Mm -hmm. He's looking for change in the uh, <laughs> payphone. <clears throat> <laughs> I love this Italian guy that's <laughs> trying to get with Roxy. Hunties? <laughs> she she is very Suzanne Flechette like. She is, yeah. I can see that a little bit, CK. He says Roxy reminds him of AOC. I, I can see that a little bit. She's got this she reminds me of Elaine from Seinfeld. Yeah, a little bit. A mm -hmm. little, little taller though. See, Elaine to me is very short. It's really hard for me to gauge height on characters. So this is, of course, the store. That's why he was there that morning to look through the window to catch a glimpse of his mannequin again. So he's trying to sneak in there now to see if it's her in the window, but it's not. And the whole premise of this movie, too, one of the reasons why it appealed to me so greatly, he ends up getting a job, as we'll see here. Well, I guess, do you do spoilers in your rewatches or should we just wait until the moment comes? Um, spoilers, guys. Okay, go. That's okay. I'll, I'll wait. Just a minute or two okay. away. <laughs> nice haul. <laughs> that that lip purse he does. Oh, yeah, I was like looking at that lip. That that's a lip acting, man. <laughs> Thanks, go team. Yeah, I see the episode names. I appreciate that. Thank you. I like these little plinky plunky sound soundtracks. Mm -hmm. Definitely 80s. Yeah, Sound Engraver yeah. would know what they're called if she was watching. I was listening to the Sound Engraver's stuff she posted yesterday, day before. Uh, some stuff she's working on. And I, I had to think, it's like she has this little place that has the plinky plunky sound. I really <laughs> liked it. And the entrance of Hollywood Montrose. Hollywood Montrose. I'm Who, of course, for, some reason. for designer women, designing women fans, was Anthony from Designing Women. Mm -hmm. Meshach Taylor. Sadly, no longer <laughs> with us. I would totally wear that hat. <laughs> you look good in that hat. I love hats. I like wacky hats. I always have. <laughs> You know, you watch this and you would go, like, he's so good at playing this kind of character. You might think he's like that in real life, but no. Yeah, he's very in. Um, I was shocked because I saw this before I ever saw Designing Women. So I was shocked when I saw Designing Women. I was like, oh my gosh, he's like totally serious and straight. And of course, I totally forgot Lieutenant Harris from Police Academy is in this. And they always put him in a uniform. Yep. He's always good at playing the dick cop. <laughs> he was such a great actor. Yeah. Police Team Academy w 2 just wasn't the movie it could have been if they'd had him in it. Glad G he came back in Police Academy 3. G.W. Bailey, I think is his name. That's his name? Okay. <laughs> Rambo. Yeah, G.W. Bailey. George William Bailey. 
He was George Bailey of Building Alone. <laughs> <laughs> he calls him Rambo because he likes to draw first blood. <laughs> 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 you don't think he had anybody particular in mind, do you, Rambo? Many, many tales from the dark side. What's that? that, that up? Many, many tales from the dark side. Everybody needs a little love. Oh, yeah, the name she was putting in the episodes yeah. there. <laughs> Lifted. He had to crack up so much doing this scene. <laughs> the jelly donuts called to me in the middle of the night. Hey, you look, you look at him laughing there, and you wonder. Is it's genuine. Or oh, no, it's got to be genuine. Yeah. I love this scene coming up, though, when she reveals okay. herself to him. <laughs> so the concept here that he must have created, it's a really kind of poetic concept. Oh, I love this. She just steps down. Yeah. <laughs> it's reaction but he made such a beautiful piece of art and put so much of himself into it that it called forth you know right her spirit you know did pygmalion have a good ending i don't remember the original original uh venus uh took pity on him and uh brought his creation to life now there might be yeah. some tellings that put a tragic twist on it after that, but but yeah, the you're basic thinking, of it is it's nice. Greeks love their tragedy. Yeah, but the usual telling is that Venus, Venus is impressed by the such love that he feels for his sculpture, that he uh, that Venus brings the sculpture to life for him. So here's the thing. It's 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 the it's so obvious why I would like this movie. He works nighttime at a department store, so this big place where normally lots of people are, but it's just him there. He's just totally alone, and he gets to be creative for his job. And then he's got this this girl there who's only for him. You know, it's uh it's so it's so obvious how a young boy would you know, especially of my temperament, would uh would be taken with this movie. So are you saying Sound Engraver was originally a mannequin? <laughs> she, she came to life only when I was around. Well, there you go. It's basically my life it. now. I mean, I'm, I, I've, I've got this hot woman who lives next to me, and she's a night owl like I am. I work from home. There you go. <laughs> yeah, her straddling that uh, bench there is not a bad way to is it giving you uh, shades of grease too your cool rider oh very <laughs> <laughs> darn it another chance to put a nail in his face and
Man, he he looks so young in this. I wonder how how old. I wonder what age difference they are. I have to look. I don't know. She is. Oh my God, sixty five now. I'm, I'm bad at math. How old she have been in eighty seven? He is fifty nine. Um, uh, eighty seven. That was twenty five years ago. So thirty four. Thirty four. She said, "Well, I, I think I, I think I was thinking this. He's fifty nine, so she is six, about six years older than him." Oh, okay. <laughs> and so I do love fifty six. Okay, fifty six. <clears throat> so thirty one. I do I really love the um, even from today's perspective with the technology we have and the things they could put in Windows today. I always thought this was so creative and so cool, just the way they, you know, she helps him design these windows. Loved him in short short circuit. He wasn't in short circuit, was he? Andrew McCarthy. That was Steve Gutenberg. Yeah, was, he, was, yeah. was he in there too? Or were you talking about Gutenberg? Police Academy. No, I, didn't, I didn't see. I was talking about Police Academy, but not not Gutenberg. I was talking oh. about uh, Bailey there in Police Academy. And of course, Prince and Company is the uh, competition for Illustra where she works. Yeah. I can tell you one thing. I can see a little bit why she didn't become more popular. Why is that? She has nothing about her face that stands out. She's beautiful, uh, but she no is, peculiarity in the details. There's, like you. there's nothing to make her stand out. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, in New York City, someone who's been unemployed for a while does not live in an apartment like that. <laughs> yeah, that, that apartment with that Harley. Yeah, no. On. He, you know, he had to be dealing drugs. I mean, it's a studio apartment, sure, but still, that much, that much uh, space. I would love to have an apartment like that. It'd be cool, a little studio like that with, you know, like a nice all-purpose big toaster oven slash air fryer slash convection oven. I do love oh, that style, though. Uh, double hot plate. In... Oh, yeah. The skinny tie and the leather jacket, that is cool. That needs to yeah. come back. I'm bringing that back. Uh, too shiny for me. Illustra, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that tinsel, it's just gross. Yeah, he always plays kind of uh the jerk. Yeah, he always plays like the jerk kind of guy. Mm -hmm. You're right. I miss the 80s. I did too, man. It was so great. On the one hand, it was a great decade to be a child in. On the other, I didn't get to experience it as an adult like you did. Yeah, I kind of I kind of stretched the gambit. I went from 15 to 25. That mm -hmm. was the perfect, perfect span. BJ worked. So he's got, of course, a, uh, a a man undercover at printing companies, James Peter. <clears throat> he's always fiddling with his uh, with his coat, buttoning it and unbuttoning it. Yeah, he's got that like hand, like the busy hands thing. 
Well, it's a way to make him seem snake-like because he's always moving, even when he's yeah. not moving. You know. Oh my God, he's like you know you know who I, he's kind of like acting like. Who? Crispin Glover as uh, McFly. Oh yeah, yeah. He's got yeah. He does have a. Um, he's kind of got that weird, similar that look. nervous energy. Mm-hmm. That, that quirky thing. Love those sunglasses, man. God, I love that decade. <laughs> He's got his suit on. <laughs> <laughs> he really would, wants to break out of this film i would there's there's got to be a, a blooper reel somewhere i hope it still exists now mannequin 2 did you ever see that um maybe <laughs> I, if i did i put it out of my my memory it was good. He was the. Uh, it, it took place at Prince and Company. He was the. He was the only character in there that was um, another like princess under a curse or whatever, uh, yeah, who's Christy, turned into a statue Christy or whatever. Swan- but... Christy Swanson. And Christy William Swanson. Ragsdale yeah, yeah. It was guy. good. It was good, and it had these three idiots and everything. It was good. It wasn't on this level, but you know, yeah. sequels rarely are. But it was still very enjoyable, if nothing else, just to watch Hollywood in it. I remember going to see that one in the theater. I like that uh, grandfather clock back there. It's nice. Mm-hmm. I like the artwork in the main room there. Washington crossing the Delaware. And... Yeah. Did you know there were th- I th- three versions of that? There usually were different versions um, yeah. of some of those classic paintings. They did three versions of it. One of them just sold, I think. Or it was going to be sold. It was... And it it had actually hung in the White House for a while or something. Oh like well, that. a lot of people don't like realize that one of the smaller ones because there's like a big one out there that's like a huge mm-hmm. version. A lot of people don't realize that President Monroe is in that painting too. He's the one holding the flag behind Washington because he was a uh, soldier in the Revolutionary yeah. War. I did. Not and know he that. actually was there at the battle. Uh, he had crossed over before Washington, but they put him in the painting anyway. Yeah, Monroe was, a, I think, a very underrated president. He was, yeah. Era of good feelings, it was called. Yeah. He, him and... Um... Wait, I'm thinking of <laughs> Madison. I'm thinking of Madison. Well, they were all underrated, I think. Well, it was a great you know, first five presidents. Washington, Adams, eh. Uh, hey, great everything Adams, except for... He was a Adams great... was a great president, but he just rubbed everybody the wrong way he was are you kidding me the alien and sedition acts the alien and sedition acts are you kidding he was wonderful founding father but a horrible president but then you got madison or jefferson madison and monroe and then quincy adams that was sweet times yeah quincy was good did you ever see amistad no great movie they had um what's his name great actor British played for, I mean, Odin, Andrew mm-hmm. Hopkins, Andrew Hopkins oh. mm-hmm. played Quincy Adams. Oh, cool. Like after he had been president, uh, it's, uh-huh. it's about the Amistad. It was about a, a group of slaves that wanted to be free. And on the, they, the ship, it, it was, it's, it's a long story, but he gave a great performance as Quis, as Quincy Adams. And he was talking about, living up to history and how much he had to live up to and he's standing there in front of a, a, oh, uh-huh. a statue of his father mm-hmm. i just thought it was it was a cool imagery whoop there she is again <laughs> boop <laughs> chris chris columbus <laughs> So she's come alive before. 
Yeah, for different different figures throughout time, but it's never worked out. She's got to find true love before she can actually stay. I love this about Michelangelo. He was more interested in someone named David. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, were you there? <laughs> now, ooh, look at that outfit. That is 80s. This this montage here haunted my pubescent dreams. <laughs> That's all I'm going <laughs> to say about that. <laughs> and again, it made sense in my own development, you know, the introvert and everything. She was just <laughs> part of the makeup of my Jungian anima. And I love I this song it, too. I would Another be great interested, 80s song. I would be interested to see what Santa Graver thinks of like the instrumentation. Uh, this, oh, just the 80s song? Yes, you'd probably like it. Alicia was the artist on this song, and she never really uh did much else that I know of anyway. But I like the uh <laughs> the montage of them like they're they're creatives in this department store alone at night, so they're trying on the different outfits, uh, acting out different scenarios and whatnot. Yeah. But I do love this song. And it, it plays into uh, her going through time, too, you know? Because <clears throat> they, they act nice, out. And... Nice little midriff there. Oh, the leopard. Is that leopard print? No, it's like stars uh, and moons. Something else. Yeah. I'd say it's almost like camo, but <laughs> I think it's a little crescents and stars. I do like the uh, Phantom of the Opera one. Phantom of the Opera, yeah. There you go. And then rock set. Yes. <laughs> Got the rock set uh, portion. Love that. Rock set. What a great duo. I do like his coat. Mm -hmm. I could never pull off that look, but I mean, the which coat, one of the, the rock set coat. songs was the video where they were in the elevator shaft like that? I can't remember which one it was. Uh, God, I'm trying to think of uh, the rock set song. I think it's so cool, guys, who can flip their hats around like that. That's pretty sweet. pencil mustache one red shoe one gray shoe yeah right ck the con i did that as a child growing up i had chuck taylor converse and it was like punky brewster i would have like one one Pat red and one black it, it 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 was the sequence of my yep yep I wonder how many people had the tape and froze at that very moment <laughs> um but yeah, I had red, blue, and black. And my favorite my favorite combination was red and black, I think. Not that I can wear cool stuff like that anymore. All my shoes have to be like orthopedic for my hips and knees. I love this. Maybe I can get G.I. Joe and we can double date. <laughs> <laughs> you notice his glasses are similar, but they're the other way around. From the yep, he's got a different pair. Around. And every time you see him in this, they're all similar, yeah. but yeah. Uh, I hope he, I hope doesn't, he doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks by her and does that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk to them. 
talk to them. Rambo. Uh, you, you knew this was coming. There's there's no way I could make it through the whole movie, especially with all the liquids I've been drinking because of allergies. So I'm going to have to slip uh, away for a second. We'll be right back. Got to take a Professor Geek. We the still Professor call it Geek that. has to take yeah. a Professor Geek. I'll be back. Yeah, we still call it that when anybody has to do that. Attack! <laughs> Aw. Poor Rambo. I love a bulldog, though. I love the big old squishy faces. They're so adorable. <laughs> yeah, he is great at playing the evil jerk cop. Ah! <laughs> Oops. Oh, that is cool, though. <laughs> that is a cool display i will i i must say <laughs> he's got an apple sitting there with just a couple bites out of it Yeah, she's a nice looking girl, but there's just nothing that really stands out about her. CK, view the LGBT stuff. Yeah, back, you know, I don't, yeah, I, I wonder if that would, that wouldn't even come to fly today because one, he's not really gay. He was a straight guy playing gay. So, you know, Liberals in Hollywood, their heads would explode right then and there. But, like, you know, you have no issue with it. I only have issues when they make a big deal about it. <laughs> the flambe terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> First time we've seen her with her hair down. Very yeah. insincere. <clears throat> That's a lot of hair. I like the scarf and everything. Now that he's a big shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's. 18, she looks like she's 30. Mm -hmm. I just don't buy them as a couple, which I guess works because... You're not supposed to. They're not supposed yeah. to be together, yeah. But, but you get the same thing with... He just looks... He, he to me, is like one of those actors like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the flambe terrorist! <laughs> he has returned! He grabs the toupee. <laughs> But, like, for the longest time, Leonardo DiCaprio mm -hmm. just looked too young. Yeah. I didn't buy yeah. him as a leading man. And suddenly, it, he, it, like, he finally hit puberty. <laughs> Poor Rambo. Yeah, I, I can see that with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. He still looks young to me. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I buy him a little bit better now, but, like, a lot of... Oh, Paul, 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 Paul. 
You missed that? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see him with the thing on his head. <laughs> Him and his dummies. <laughs> Poor little thing. I love, I just love a boxer with that big smushed face. I always have. I've always loved bulldogs like that. Yeah. Bulldogs. But, did I say boxer? You said boxer, yeah. I meant bulldog, but yeah, but boxers too. I like boxers, bulldogs, pugs. You've got to carry them around in a wagon now. <laughs> yeah. I like dogs with swishy faces. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have a hard time breathing, sadly. A lot of them. You'd love my sister's, uh, my niece's two dogs. They've got two little Boston Terriers. Oh, they're cute. Yeah, I like a Boston Terrier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This scene right here always reminded me of Superman, Miss Tessmacher, and her little section oh, of the, uh, the the cave right there that looked like a cruise or a beach. Remember? Yeah, Miss <clears throat> Tessmacher. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that that dog turned its head, made I know that shot. Yep, that was perfect. <laughs> now they're there to try to steal. Well, they're there spying on him right now. <laughs> the guy's like, he will not give up. He is just after her. Yeah. <laughs> I lie. <laughs> I don't even want to repeat it, but it's just so classic. I just love. I just love how he's got the high, high waters and the white socks. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I like them old radio flyers. Oh, the wagons? Yeah. <laughs> Switch. <laughs> now what would happen <laughs> if someone was spying and saw her while they were interacting would she just suddenly stop because of a pair of eyes are on her yeah anytime someone else looks at her <clears throat> <laughs> don't stop woody <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting take, CK. Uh, I, I I wouldn't um I wouldn't uh discount that as a valid way of looking at the movie. I don't, I don't know if I think that's exactly what the director had in mind, but, uh, but you know, the cool thing about art is you can see it in a number of different ways like that. I think that's a pretty interesting one. What's the director of this, by the way? The what? <laughs> Michael Gottlieb. Uh. I know that name. Let's see what else he directed. Well, he's like committing assault on this boy, like 
<clears throat> I know. He really didn't do much else uh, directing wise. Anything of note, really. But he did write Mannequin. He wrote this as well. Oh, yeah. Right after he wrote Playboy Midsummer Night's Dream Party. <laughs> so you know where his mind is. He did Mr. Nanny with Hulk Hogan. Oh, God. <laughs> A kid in King Arthur's Court. Oh, I remember that. They had that um, kid from, like, Rookie of the Year or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Switch out his glasses. <laughs> I do like that bike. And of course, that really wouldn't actually work. No, it's there's still cool. Yeah, the wind, there's no wind. Uh, but up, she's got up, some up. magic to her, so, you know. That's true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been me with the nightstick when I was a security guard, if I ever, if I ever had one. What did you have when you were on security? A cell phone so I could call the police. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted to carry. I figured if I take a nightstick, if I ever tried, somebody would just take it from me and hit me with it. She always wanted to fly. <laughs> poor Rambo doesn't deserve all this abuse. No, I know. Poor Rambo. Ooh. Mm, doing it in a big pile of teddy bears. Kinky. They're just cuddling. They actually I, get into the actual. I said later. doing it. I meant cuddling. Uh huh. Little right. Yeah. Okay. All the big old teddy bear like that. They're cool. I have to find what's a slouse one day. My little Christmas bear. He's packed away somewhere. <laughs> So she's she's decided now that she's in love with him. But he has to reciprocate, right? Is that the whole? Well, it's never really. Yeah, he has to. I mean, they, they didn't spell out. He has to really be willing to to. Because uh, right now she's bought him fortune, right? She's brought him fame and fortune uh, helping him with these windows. So he has to really be. Uh, he has to show anyway that he's willing to lay it all down for her to give everything right. for her. <clears throat> Fool. What a great actor. <laughs> Rambo. <laughs> I look what she says here. He's brought in so much money. I don't care if he wants to run around naked with a rubber glove on his head saying, hello, I'm a squid or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
I always thought he should have said, hi, I'm a squid. <laughs> so that's the look you're going to bring back, right? Yep. The skinny tie, the leather jacket. Yeah, but, you, right there. but, you, but you're, you, you like your black, so you got to have to darken it up a bit. You yeah. got you gotta Johnny, to Johnny Cash it up a little. <laughs> I'd wear that blue. <clears throat> I she is just so likable. Mm -hmm. Even when she was like mean as Sophia, she was just so likable. Oh yeah. Uh, the the newspaper montages of those eighties movies, classic. Ghostbusters had one. Yep. What does have mannequin? Well, the eighties loved their mu musical montage. They did. It was a thing, you know. <laughs> Everybody knows he's the guy with the dummy. I love this scene here. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> Ooh, forty eight percent. And now Lustra looks like Prince and Company did at the beginning of the movie. Classic professor, professor as a security guard reminds me of Blue Streak. I never saw Blue Streak. Making him a vice president. So it also reminds, uh, reminds him of national security with Martin Lawrence. Never saw that. <laughs> you kind of like whoop. <laughs> they did fill, I think they filled these at actual uh, department stores. What's that? They, they, they were filled at actual department stores. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. One of which is a Macy's now. <laughs> okay. I'd love to go into that. Which, what, I've been to New York City a few different times, and I never thought to go into the one that Mannequin was filmed in. Because they can't, of course, they would have changed it and it looked different, but it's still got to have that atrium and the multi-tiered levels, you know, and stuff. I'm sure I'd recognize yeah, things. It was, a, it was actually filmed <laughs> in Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia. Okay. Well, I've been there. It's actually times, closer. Too. Yeah, I used to live in uh, northern Delaware. A visit store, okay, John Wanamaker's in Philadelphia, which is now Macy's Center City. Hmm. It was given the name Prince and Company for the film. Inter the interior filming at Wanamaker's took three weeks. Illustria was Boscove's department store. I like football shopping in Pennsylvania. Also, Pennsylvania. I love this when Hollywood goes in and starts crying, <laughs> and they say, "Who's crying?" They said, "It's either the new vice president, the fairy, or the dummy." <laughs> <laughs> And 
enter Hollywood. <laughs> I will not tolerate eavesdropping unless I'm a part of it. A part of it, yeah. Who do you think introduced them? <laughs> oh, again, his, his gloves, very, his glasses, very reminiscent of of my avatars. <laughs> At least she'll never <laughs> tell you that your hips are too fat. <laughs> 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 oh. What is what else did Misek Taylor never really did much after um designing women? He he had a lot of bit parts. I remember being shocked one time I was watching an episode of The Incredible Hulk and he was a uh, military policeman, security guard, <clears throat> just like in the background, Let's you see. know. He was in Damien Omen 2, The Howling. Oh, he was in Explorers. That's a cool movie. Golden Girls. Yeah, so he worked with Estelle Getty a couple of years before. Oh, in Golden Girls. Okay, cool. Yeah, he was a cop. <laughs> what the dummy? <laughs> <laughs> he did a couple episodes of Criminal Minds. Double Double Toil and Trouble. Oh God, that's with the uh, Ash, the Olsen twins. In the Heat of the Night, he did all the All Nighter. I remember so, that. So here we go. She can't come alive to do the window with her tonight because Hollywood's going to be there. <clears throat> and she's not giving him any ideas. She's saying, I know you can do it. This is him having to act on the inspiration that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that goes my, my thought. He says he wants to take a picture with the naked mannequin. So, Mom will think I've switched. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh my gosh! What am I talking about? Oh yeah, so she's bringing out you know that's part part of what she's doing for him and part of what you know their relationship does for him. Yeah, uh, she, she's giving him all these ideas and whatnot, but as his art come to life, it has to it has to create more art. You know, it's one way of reading the movie too. Is you know the, the way your art you can love what you created, but if it doesn't spurn you on to create more art, then it's not worth it. You know, oh, so yeah. um. So there's that, and he has to th take this step, and then one more important step before they can be together and others can see her and everything. <clears throat> that's a great head of hair right there. That's got that's got some body to it. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Oh, that's right, CK. Yeah, Batman '89 had the uh, the radio or the uh, newspaper montage about Smilex. Yeah. <clears throat> now, what would happen if there were video on them? What would the person watching the tape see? Interesting. Aha. This was, of course, before video surveillance was, you know, ubiquitous. Because, yeah, th she's outside right now. So. And this is basically him telling her. So he's taking her out. On a, a night on the town, even though you know he's, she's going to be seen with a, uh, a mannequin. <laughs> I love this. I love this line here. Uh, no, not this one. As uh, when this old couple comes up and sees them. <laughs> I 
kind of <laughs> like nice to meet you. <laughs> That's right. Don't need Lustra or you. <laughs> I like this here when he finally gets his chance with her. Nothing about. <laughs> I am the wind. <laughs> Our button is the wind. <laughs> oh, poor, poor, poor Rambo is nothing more but a little, little picture. We have a grim cracker. This right here. This this. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you to criticize? <laughs> that prevert. <laughs> that little pevert. <laughs> I'll <laughs> oh, see you, CK. Good, uh, good chatting with you. Good comments. Hope you get some good rest. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. There's one psycho guy. Mm -hmm. A little more of that synth music thing going mm -hmm. on. This was set in New York City, though, right? I don't know, was it? I just always assumed, but I guess it could have been set in Philadelphia. No, it is Philadelphia. Oh, it's set in Philadelphia. Yep. I did not know that. Well, as a child, I'd never been to New York City or Philadelphia, so every big city just, just assume is New York, you know, when I'm watching as a kid. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> oh, poor guy. <laughs> it never okay. happened to Armand before. <laughs> oh, he's got he's got the he's got the tiger pattern sheets and a tiger above his bed. <laughs> Little Armand, this wasn't up to the task. <laughs> this has never happened to Armand before. Never did ride a motorcycle and have a beautiful woman hanging on tight. I had a motor scooter when I was like in middle school, high school, freshman year. It was I would just ride it around all the farmland we had around here. Now, was it like one of those like with the little tires, little mini bike kind of thing? No, it was a proper like road ready eighties motor scooter. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Went like sixty five. Oh, like 
Like I got in trouble on a couple hills around here. Like a Vespa looking thing? Nope, nope. Before that, like a real road. Huh. Yeah. Whoa. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> that shot is cool. With that leg just hanging it, that's, over. That's, it's pretty artistically framed. Yeah, she's, she's well, she's got nice legs. So it's... But, I mean, it with the all mannequins around her, you know, you can see what they're doing with the images. That looks like a comfortable mattress or cover. Mm -hmm. There was talk of them doing a remake of this. No, never. They couldn't do it today. Not with the jokes and stuff they had in this. Everything would well, be so it, woke it would and have blah. To be, it would have to be a little more. It have to be woke um, Yeah. Nonsense. It, In 2010, Gladden Entertainment executives were in the early development stage of a remake, envisioning the plot of a man crushing on a laser display hologram. Ugh. Now, that would be cool, like a re envision. Yeah, yeah. Again, they couldn't do it today with all the garbage they've got going on, but that could be and interesting. It, and if they do that, they <clears throat> can call it mannequin. It would have to mm -hmm. be like hologram. Yeah. And then people would like think, oh, they're re releasing Gem in the holograms. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a meme the other day that said, it's time for us all to admit the Misfits were the better band. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> and they can't figure out which one it is. <laughs> I guess they all just look alike to him. <laughs> He's going to take them all. <laughs> I like when he tries to carry this one here in a second. <laughs> 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 oh, this is the door. <laughs> so they're stealing his love. But this is his test, will he? That looks super comfortable. Come on. Yeah. I mean, my goodness. Whoops. Looks very Viking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. She is gone too. <laughs> Everybody's clapping. <laughs> Why'd they take that one? Oh, you're right. Why didn't they take the one against the wall? That's a good call. <laughs> I do like the, the Egyptian motif going on there. Yeah, that's cool. And Hollywood's car. Exactly the kind of car he would have with bad girl on the license plate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like uh I like the car, he, different paint job, but I like the car. <laughs> He's got a cover. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> <Polka dot is>. cover. <laughs> I would. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so good. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, Al. I got something to rest of again. I'm laughing. Oh, geez, man. You've got the bladder the size hey, of a grape. Well, uh, yeah, yes, I do. But I was also rocking all the way around Bush Gardens with Alyssa yesterday, and it was a bad allergy day, oh, both of us. And then this morning, I mowed the lawn. Oh. So my throat's been so scratchy. I have just been pouring liquid down it nonstop. And that, of course, means I have to go to the bathroom every few minutes. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, for... Ooh. <laughs> oh, nice punch. I wonder if that was Paulson. <laughs> oh no, Rambo has been replaced. Terminator. <laughs> Rambo wasn't up to the job. See if the Terminator can get it done. The <laughs> SWAT team. I said, yeah, call the police. These guys stole stuff from the place. They should be prosecuted. I hope that happens because <laughs> he just has no luck with uh, with dogs. Man, tear that store up. Now, was she doing this out of jealousy or do you think she's actually jealous of a mannequin? I mean, she should be. But I miss Terminator. <laughs> yeah, you did. <clears throat> I'm thinking one of these how many security officers does that place have I'm sorry what'd you say I was wondering one of those guys must be Rob Paulson oh yeah 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 oh um, totally you know hell hath no fury like a woman scorned she wasn't in nothing to do with him she was ready to break up with him but he dared deny her and she's gonna yeah. go she wants to go uh wood chip her. trash compact the <laughs> yeah wood chip the the mannequin that <clears throat> he loves well hope it's not that one because her head's gone <laughs> <laughs> no That one's bald. Uh, <laughs> why has he got such a boner for him, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, Emmy. I like those shoes. Yikes. Mm hmm. Uh, <laughs> Hollywood to the, uh, to the rescue. <laughs> Hollywood. <so> <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Come and get me, Sister Mariella. <laughs> Those fire hoses, that'd be a lot of pressure, too. So that makes sense. Yeah, they are. Oh. <laughs> this is what being a man is all about. Now that guy, uh, the the janitor there. Do you know? Remember at the end, it's pretty good. <laughs> oh jeez! He deserves an Oscar for this role. <laughs> Oh, man. Now, right here, this is him really passing the test. And suddenly it it, uh, it works because you see the uh, the janitor in a moment sees that it's a woman yeah. and not just a mannequin. Although, honestly, like the janitor should have been turning that off <laughs> a long time I ago. Know. About time. Looks, looks like Seth Green. <laughs> Man, just some guy named Andrew Hill Newman. <laughs> <laughs> Little snaps. And they can see her. And now she is stuck with Andrew McCarthy. <laughs> forever. He, he promised to love her forever. <laughs> he wants to find himself yeah, a mannequin. <laughs> And he's digging through the garbage and he ends up finding, well, it cuts. And now she sees Emmy for real. <laughs> it's the heat. <laughs> Mama put the coins in my eye. <laughs> what a great, what a great reference. <laughs> She's the dummy. And now we have the security footage. And I like when, uh, Switch your ass there a second. Anything else catch on those videos? Yeah. She's the dummy. <laughs> <laughs> this poor man's having a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Hollywood. It's a good thing that I never met Meshach Taylor because I'm sure this role was just like one that he did and wanted to forget about. But like, I would never stop asking him to do the Hollywood. Yeah. Do Hollywood. Do Hollywood. <laughs> it could have been too bad because he did the sequel. That's true. He did the sequel. Poor guy. Uh oh. Here we go. 80s yep. song at its best. Here's the Starship. Such a great song. And their wedding. Wait. uh were they Starship perfect. or Jefferson Starship at this point? I think by this time in the 80s, they were just Starship. 87? Yeah, yeah they were just oh, Starship. There it goes again. <laughs> perfect. Wedding in the, uh, in the uh, store window. Yeah. Love that wedding dress, too. <laughs> Hollywood cry. I like that little sparkly handkerchief he's got. <laughs> Hollywood, best man catches the bouquet. It also looked like he was the the officiant. Yeah, but the priest is behind. Uh, Oh, I still still getting. Ah, oh, what a great, great movie. Now, you've only seen it once. You finally saw it again. Okay. All kidding aside about wanting to punch Andrew McCarthy. It's a it's a wonderful, cute little romantic, wacky comedy that is epitomizes the 80s. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. a lot of fun. I think I think I'm in a better headspace now to appreciate certain films that maybe didn't quite strike a chord when I first saw them. Mm -hmm. So uh, when are you going to schedule in Weekend at Bernie's then? Oh my god! <laughs> you like Weekend at Bernie's? It, it was okay. I don't. It's not on this level or anything. Okay, it was fine. Yeah, it thank was okay. God. I did like uh, Pretty in Pink though. Not pretty. Uh, uh, yeah, well, was it was pretty pink or sixteen candles that he was in? Pretty pink. Pretty pink. Because he stole Molly Ringwald. He didn't steal Ducky. her. You know, they actually the end of that movie was actually supposed to be her and Ducky dancing at the last dance, and that was the way it was supposed to end. But test audiences were, test were audiences they expected her to get with Andrew McCarthy, so um, they shot it. They reshot it at the end. Yeah, but I still, you know, I always root for the underdog. You know? Yeah, yeah. Poor Ducky. Yeah. Now, I will say, I wouldn't, I don't know about Pretty and Prank, but I could definitely see a 16 Candles rewatch. Mm, it's a good day. one. I it's love that one. movie. That is, a, that is a really fun movie. Um, but yeah, that is Mannequin. I, uh, I must say, I had a much better time. Like I said, it's always, and, I, and I'm sure you have something to do with it. It's always better to watch movies with a friend who genuinely likes the movie because mm -hmm. it kind of rubs off sure. on you. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it it makes it fun watching it with, with you know, someone who likes it. And yeah. Yeah. You get to see it through their eyes and your laughter makes it all fun and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh so good. But uh yeah, just just had a had a blast. I'm just I'm just so glad you could um, make time for me tonight, mm -hmm. considering I was going to be all alone. <laughs> of course, of course. No, I wouldn't let that happen. Now, Gottlieb did write Mannequin on the Move, which was the sequel, but he didn't yeah. direct it. Um, Stuart Raphael directed it, but he did write the original, and then he wrote this one. So, yep. uh, Santa Graver saying over already. Yes, it is over. Santa yep. Graver. Uh, a lot of great, a lot of, a lot of fun music in this that kind of has that, you know, that synth computer sound that would be kind of interesting to hear. Yeah, very 80s. Kind of hear your, hear your thoughts on it, but you weren't here listening and watching. Um, <laughs> maybe one day get get you on here and <clears throat> watching some, watching uh, something with a lot of synth music in it. Uh, 
I was remembering fondly Forbidden Planet the other day because Forbidden Planet was on television mm-hmm. uh, the other day. They had a they had a really cool sci fi day on. Uh, I think I don't know if it was Turner Classic Movies or one of those. Uh, one of those channels it was a lot of that and them. Oh God, I love those kind of movies. I want to do mm-hmm. a month of those one day too. Oh yeah. But uh, what's coming up uh, with uh, Professor Geek Channel and or Catholic Bible Geek Channel? Anything? Uh, well, Tuesday, if... Tuesday we're we're yeah. doing another installment of Return of the King. Um, I really was supposed to have another Bible survey on Catholic Bible Geek this week. Um, still kind of want to do it. I just don't think I'm gonna be able to do it this weekend. Between uh, grading. Um, and Alyssa and, and, uh, you know, cause this is the end of semester for me. So lots of papers doing grading. Like, Hey, I don't want to miss, I know missed Holy week, which is understandable, but I don't, Oh, I don't know. It might just have to come like Tuesday night or something, but, uh, but that's the survey through the Bible thing. But yeah, return of the King on Tuesday night. I think, I think the Ascension's on my birthday this year. Really? Cool. 26, the actual Ascension. Mm-hmm. Not the, the mass that will yeah. be on Sunday, but um, but yeah, Return of the King read um, read through the end of book five today. Finish finish that. Yep. Although we still have a couple, we still have a couple chapters from previous because we never got to the um, House of Healing. Yeah, we still got to do that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not sure if we're going to get through the whole thing, but I am prepared in case we do. So we'll see how far it that'll, goes. That'll be good. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, that's what's going. And like I mentioned earlier, next Saturday night, uh, as far as I know, Troy and Nanette will be back and we will be watching Robin Hood Men in Tights. It is the first of May Merriment. It, uh, I could almost consider this a little, little foreshadowing of May Merriment. But yeah, Mel Brooks, uh, homage to Robin Hood prince of thieves <laughs> with, uh, with kevin costner uh but uh, this would carry ellis and the early dave Chappelle, which a lot of people oh that's about. right he was in that wasn't yeah, he? yeah. he played he played achu huh. uh, whose father was a sneeze yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh a lot of fun uh, just just a fun wacky crazy film to watch mm-hmm. that and of course uh the week after that will be black cauldron and then uh, stripes mm-hmm. after that i'm not sure what netter has planned for that but got giant robot june coming up uh robot jocks and pacific rim looking forward to that Very so cool. um that's right i know i don't know if birdman wasn't here tonight but i think he's got i think he's getting ready to do a string of schwarzenegger films oh cool I believe Commando may be first on that list. I don't know if it's going to be this Wednesday, but definitely keep an eye out. He's got a great show over there. This man knows his soundtracks. He's doing a James Horner, his James Horner collection tomorrow night, I believe. Oh, cool. <clears throat> so they're always fun to see. Have you seen his some of his collection? Uh-oh. He, is, he has got some really cool stuff. Some uh, great, like the LPs that they're putting out now with the great artwork, and oh, yeah, he, he sends me pictures beautiful. every now and then of some cool stuff he gets. Yeah, they're they're beautiful, and uh, he's working on maybe visiting me in June. Cool. cool. Uh, so uh, we will see you later. I'm so glad you all could join us tonight. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend, and once again. Big Al and Professor Geek on a rewatch. Seems like old times, which was another good movie. I like that one too. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of great movies out there. That's right. Mm-hmm. One with Big Al watch. W B was it now what? W W B A B Big Al W. Oh, I gotta get that straight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take care, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. What do they know?